varnishing is kind of um, some people take it really seriously and make it seem like you're you know creating a piano when you're you know doing your work that's sort of over the top for me and I like to get out there and sail and <laughs> enjoy the look of things and not be spending all my time working <laughs> Okay, today's project is varnishing teak. Unfortunately, there's less teak on most modern boats these days than the old boats, um, but hopefully there's a little bit still on your boat because uh, it's, um, it's very beautiful to look at once it's all done. It's a little bit time consuming the first time you do varnishing on bare teak, but then keeping it up is less work and uh, the rewards are great having a chance to look at um, the beautiful glossing teak on your boat. Um, so what I'm doing today is I am um, doing our cockpit table. So I've taken uh, on here would normally be um, pieces of the cockpit table and two leaves that come out. I've set them up there on the dock um, to work on. And also I've got this piece that's the sort of pole rail for the companionway. So I remove that um, and I'm going to varnish this one as well. This is a couple months into ownership of our boat and when we got the boat the teak was not finished at all, it was just bare teak. And to protect the table from use and spills and all that and to keep it from um, graying over like the teak on the uh, cockpit sole here, um, I put teak oil on the leaves and the main part of the table. So that's why it's a little bit of a sort of a bronze color there um, and not the, not the sort of weathered teak of the floor here. So that's just teak oil and that was just to protect it. You can still varnish over teak oil. Um, it still comes out fine. You want to start off by cleaning the teak and uh, sanding it down smooth. So this teak is not that old that I really need to clean it. Um, sometimes teak gets, well, it gets gray or sometimes it gets black and you want to use a teak cleaner on that. Um, that's kind of messy. It's a chemical. You got to wipe it on, let it sit for a little bit. It almost like it bleaches out um, the, the wood and it brings back uh, the original, pretty close to the original teak color and then you can varnish from there. Um, but for this teak, um, all I need to do is the sanding part. And the sanding kind of cleans up a little bit of the, you know, any kind of like surface grit on there as well, or surface dirt, and a little bit of, if there's a little bit of grain to the teak, you can usually sand that out. You don't need necessarily need to use a teak cleaner. Okay, so um, when you've got bare teak like this and it hasn't weathered a lot, um, you can just sort of surface sand it. I've got some 320 sandpaper. Um, something like this or maybe a 240 grit sandpaper would be fine, even 120, but I would stick to something closer to twos or threes. And you just want to do um, a light sand of it. You'll feel right away that it's smoothing out and um, any kind of areas along the edge that may be starting to weather a little bit more, um, you can sand those out. This fortunately was a piece that was in pretty good shape. Um, definitely on bigger pieces you could use a palm sander or an orbital sander. Try to go in the line, like any sanding, you want to go in line with the grain. And get these edges a little bit. I'm not going to worry about the bottom side because nobody will see that. And that's pretty good there. Obviously I'm just showing you a small piece, it'd be a lot more work with a bigger piece and again a palm sander would work great for this. And you can get some of the grayness out. If the gray is really deep in or there's grain showing up, roughness on the surface, you definitely want to use a palm sander and, and get that going or um, even a teak cleaner. Okay, so that's the sanding part. Okay, so once you're done sanding, um, and I, I don't have the benefit of a nice workshop or workbench, so I'm going to kind of try to improvise in the cockpit here. Um, but you get the idea of how this works. You want to get the, the sanding residue off. Um, you can use a tack cloth, which is a sort of like a sticky um, cloth that sort of picks up in the surface dust. I just like to use a little bit of um, paint thinner, or if you have it, the thinner that's recommended by the varnish that you're going to be using. Um, here in Europe, um, they, they call it white spirit instead of paint thinner. Um, and it does have a sort of a milky color to it. So it's a little bit strange to see. Um, but it works fine. 
the reason why you want to use the the thinner that was recommended by the varnish maker is that they they're using that thinner in their products you know that it'll work smoothly so if you just wipe a little bit on and just wipe in one direction you'll see I'm picking up a lot of residue there that would all be picked up by your varnish brush so you're saving yourself um, some effort here and it'll make the varnish come out smoother and clearer and cleaner doesn't take much just a little bit of paint there you don't want to soak it all into the wood um, but you do want to get enough there to pick up any of that residue and I'm, I'm continuing to kind of wipe in one direction all right um, so then I'm just gonna let this sit out and that that um, paint thinner or white spirit <laughs> will um, evaporate you can actually start even see it uh, disappearing from the wood already so you want to just let that sit out and make sure it's you don't want to you don't want to varnish on top of um, wood that has something that's already wet with with paint thinner ideally you'd want to do this in a closed environment like inside a garage or a basement or somewhere that's protected from the wind I'm gonna get wind all day today and I'm just sort of hoping that nobody's gonna be doing a big sanding project or there's no uh, sand bowls or <laughs> dust bowls or whatever nearby us but you kind of work with what you got when you're on the boat so you can see this piece of woods already you know it's pretty much all the paint thinner is evaporated and it's really nice and smooth so that's going to come out nice when it's varnished. Okay the next process um, and this is an optional thing is to put on some kind of oil some teak oil. Um, teak oil and this one's made by Starbright but there's a bajillion different <laughs> makers out there. Um, this is just happened to be what I could find when we we're traveling um, in France recently with the boat. Um, so teak oil can be used just by itself uh, to protect the teak and to give it a nice luster and look um, and some people just do that is put they just rub oil continuously on their teak I did that for a while on an older boat and you really have to keep up with it if you if you don't keep up oil on it every couple of weeks then it starts to kind of uh, turn a little black and gray and weather and then you got to start all over again you got to sand the, the, the grayness out and then you got to put the oil back on it's a big pain um, I did the oil on our table, cockpit table, temporarily, just until I had time now to do some varnishing. But varnishing is really the way to go. It's going to protect it longer. Yes, you'll have to put new coats of varnish on every year, sometimes twice a year. Um, but it's uh, it's a much stronger coating, and it looks a lot better. Oil is, oils, you can oil it if you want to get a certain look to it, um, and then varnish on top of it. Um, but it's a sort of interim step. Varnishing is kind of, um, some people take it really seriously and make it seem like you're, you know, creating a piano when you're, you know, doing your work and, or, you know, a nice beautiful piece of furniture. And that's, for them, that's great. Uh, I just don't spend that much time on it. I love the look of varnish. It doesn't take a lot of work to make it look good. Um, but I don't go over the top with like crazy amounts of concentration of, you know, making sure I have the, like the finest brushes and completely, obviously, completely um, air protected space. So there's no dust anywhere. Um, that's sort of over the top for me and I like to get out there and sail and <laughs> enjoy the look of things and not be spending all my time working. And so on the tabletops, there's some, there's some markings there. There's some wine spills. There's some, you know, places where tools were uh, placed on them so there might be a little nick here and there not bad at all um, but you know actually I kind of like the look it gives a little bit of a distressed look to it it makes it seem again not like a you're creating a uh, you know piano top or a, a fine piece of furniture for a, a nice house so um, that's my attitude and I think it's gonna come out great you'll see when you put that first coat of varnish on it it's wow, wow that's really beautiful and you're really gonna um, feel good about the work you put into it so far. But like any kind of painting project, prep is huge. Um, again, the sanding, the cleaning of the varnish, uh, wiping it down afterwards, that's gonna pay back in huge dividends. All right, so we're gonna go into doing a little teak oil. Okay, so we're ready to uh, wipe this teak oil on. Um, the teak oil is like super runny. It's like, it's like water, so just be careful with that when you're applying it. It's really easy. You'll probably see me drop a few drops on this um, on this teak floor 
um, and it, it wipes out or rubs out after a couple weeks so I'm not going to worry about that too much but just sort of when you're applying it it's really easy to over apply and I'm going to use you can use a brush but I'm just going to use a rag and wipe it on um, that for me allows you to get the most even kind of coating and like I said I want it's not uh, hard to over repeat this um, it's really really runny and you can see I've already probably put too much on there on the rag I'm gonna wipe off the extra there and again I don't have a great work area here but a workshop will be fabulous I'm working out of a marina temporarily um, outside of Rome so we're kind of working with what you've got but I got the teak oil on here I'm gonna rub it on you can see the beautiful color coming in there already got some strands of cloth here just make sure that when you're done that any of those threads um, are not staying on top of the wood but you can see why just people just love to put teak oil um, period on it and, and not even get around to the varnishing because you rub, rub the teak oil on it's like wow that looks great and it really does um, I would say this is some of the more satisfying things you can do on a boat I just finished a couple days of doing electrical work and setting up our refrigerators with digital thermostats so this is a nice change of pace from that so there you go um, obviously if you got a bigger piece it'll take more time but there you go I may come back since this has not been had any oil on it yet I may come back in an hour or so and put another coat on we're in really hot sun it's probably 85 degrees here it's gonna dry really quickly so for this I'm just gonna do just kind of a surface wipe with a clean cloth just to get any kind of stuff off the top again I don't go too crazy with this kind of stuff I could do a light sand but then I'd have to clean up the sand residue and all that and on the underneath the table I did did wipe down a, some teak oil in here I think it's going to be fine I'm going to do one or two coats of varnish on the bottom just to protect it and I'm using just um disposable gloves super helpful might as well you'll help yourself a lot by getting a um a whole box of them I use them all the time for engine work for painting varnishing all that stuff I've also taken the hinges off and the pull ring here just to make it possible to get all the varnish on there without overlapping on any of the hardware Okay, we're going to call that good enough and wipe some teak oil down on those tabletops. So once again, super easy to over apply this. And I'm just going to do a really light coat on here because this already has teak oil on it. Just trying to fill in any little inconsistencies so that it looks a little bit more even once the varnish goes on. If this was bare teak, like that pull rail, um, it would take a lot more oil to get it to soak in. And especially the corners, those get a lot of contact and wear and tear, so you want to make sure that they are treated carefully with extra oil and, tea and varnish. So that's looking good. So you can kind of see how things are going to be covered up. I had some sort of lighter marks here and the oil is soaking in quite well into those and making them a little bit more even. And when I varnish, I'm not going to really varnish down into these pull ring holes or the hinge areas. Um, I just took them off so I can get right around the edge. If you get down in there, you can see there's dirt in there and you're going to pick that up on your brush and then you're going to start to spread that dirt up on the surface, which is where you don't want it. All right, this is looking really good. This oil, I'll probably give it no more than an hour to soak in and dry up and we'll be ready to go with the varnish. Okay, now we've given that teak oil um, about an hour's worth of time to dry. Um, I've checked it, I can't, when I touch it, I can't feel any moisture at all. So it's a bright sunny day today and uh, that kind of stuff dries out um, very quickly on the wood. So we're ready to go to start varnishing. Um, 
So a couple things you want to have handy is more uh, latex gloves, disposable gloves. You'll want a roll of paper towels with you to clean up any little drips or runs. Uh, varnish isn't quite as runny as a teak oil, but it is still very runny, um, especially if you thin it. And so you want to have towels available in case you have any spills or places where, especially on the edges of like these, the tabletops, you'll see you can get varnish on the edge and it'll come back around and it'll, it'll form a little like start of a drip. And then that stuff hardens and then you got this like bump thing underneath that, that edge and it, it's, um, so you want to, I usually go around with a little paper towel at the end or a rag and kind of wipe those edges just to make sure I've got any um, extra accumulated varnish that shouldn't be there. Um, and then of course you'll need the varnish itself. So um, this is the varnish that I like to use, um, made by Interlux. Um, it's called Schooner Varnish. I've tried a lot of different varnishes um, and Interlux makes a lot of uh, boat paint related products. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs> I just, um, I found that this one works well because it goes on really well with the brush. It's very smooth. It doesn't get, it's not too thick. And it also dries really well. I've used some other um, varnish products years ago. Maybe they've improved on it. Um, but, you know, it would get, it would take forever to dry. And if you don't do it early enough in the day, then you get moisture in the evening. And then, you know, it's game over at that point. You don't want to have, um, you don't want to have any kind of moisture when you're doing varnish. So if your wood is at all wet, you want to put out in the sun or basically get it get it to dry out. Um, as everybody knows, oil and water does not mix and varnish is an oil-based product. You don't want it to come anywhere near water. You don't want water in the wood. You don't want any chance of moisture in the air or God for sake, uh, rain or uh, anything like that. Um, you might as well just start all over. You're kind of wasting your time and your money at that point. Assuming it's dry, I found that the schooner varnish, you can get multiple coats on in a day. This is about, mm, uh, it's a little before noon right now and I'm hoping to get at least two coats, maybe three coats in a day. That's a little bit uh, different than the, they recommend on the, on the can. They'll probably say, you know, let it dry for a half a day. Um, but in the warm sun, um, I find that it dries pretty quickly and you can get extra coats on, so that's helpful. The other products I've tried, it's really hard to get more than one coat on a day. And so you're, if you're trying to put a whole bunch of coats on, this can be like a week-long effort, which who has time for that? So Schooner, um, the other thing to talk about is brushes. And I'm going to get probably a lot of grief from some viewers, but today I'm going to be using this disposable sort of chip brush. Um, it's the only brushes I have available on the boat right now and um, but I'll show you that you can do decent varnishing with a super cheap brush. Now if I was at home I take one of my really nice expensive brushes um, that I clean and dry and reuse all the time and um, it's gonna look great. On this I'll just have to be a little bit more careful um, primarily with the little um, hairs of the brush coming off while you're brushing. So that's another thing I have the paper towels for is to kind of go back and it's hard to get it with a finger but I find with a little bit of a paper towel edge you can pick up those little strands and get them off of the wood. You know that's that's one of the risks and, and also it's a chance that it won't go on quite as smooth but again with this varnish I find that it's it's got really good I think film characteristics is what they call it where it lays out really smooth and flat. If you do use a nice brush, make sure you have paint thinner available to put the brush in afterwards and clean it up really well so you can reuse that brush and not lose your investment. These ones are disposable. I'm just going to throw them away at the end. Um, but you can, between coats in a day, I'm going to take this and put this in a Ziploc bag, get all the air out of it as possible, and also you can put it in a refrigerator. That'll slow down the hardening of the varnish, and I will hopefully get more than one use out of these brushes because I don't have a lot of them. So that's varnish, brushes, paper towels, hand protection, um, what else? Um, obviously if you can paint in the least windy spot as possible, that's great. Um, I, if there's any chance of rain, uh, sprinklers going on where you are, you want to take that into account. Um, but other than that, we're gonna, I'm going to wipe on the varnish in line with the grain, same as I did with the sanding. And around the edges, I'm going to be very careful to not over apply because I'm going to get that varnish to sort of drip around and kind of hang off the bottom edge and form like a drip bubble, which is not attractive. So that's that. Okay, we're ready to go with the varnishing. Um, you don't shake uh, varnish cans. It's not like a latex paint. You don't need to blend in anything that's not quite in solution. If you, mix, if you shake it, you're going to be adding bubbles uh, to the varnish and then that won't go on as smooth. You don't want any air in there. So no shaking. Just gonna carefully open the can. 
it's a used can, you might get a little film that's dried on on top. Don't worry too much. What I do is I take a screwdriver and I kind of lightly tap the edge because it's sticking to the edge of the can. And you go around and you kind of lightly tap the edge and eventually the thing is going to get loose and you can kind of pick it up with a screwdriver and lump it into a trash can. Um, and if you don't get all of it, don't worry. What happens is the, that, that skin layer sinks down the bottom and it, this may be a sh shock to you but this happens to me all the time it actually sort of um, becomes part of the varnish again. And um, I do this all the time, and there would be a whole bunch of skin stuff in the bottom, but I've, I've used paint all the way to the bottom of the can, and it's still been all varnished, it hasn't been skinned. So just kind of scrape off the, the edge part until you can get as much of it out with a screwdriver, and then you can, you're good to go there. You may be getting a little bit of clumpy stuff when you wipe it on, and no big deal, just take a little bit of paper towel and uh, you can grab it with that and pull it off of the, uh, the wood that you're varnishing. So I kind of like to have a bag or some or paper towel um, as I'm moving around to set this on because you're going to get a little bit of varnish dripping down the edge um, and you don't want to kind of hurt things with that. So get the brush a little wet, wipe it on the edge. You don't want too much varnish, but you don't want a dry brush either. It's easier to air on that side of too much varnish. So, I'm going to start in a corner. And wipe on. And then I'll come around the edge at the end. Come around the edge at the end means I'm going to get anything that might have dripped over from doing on the surface. And I have a better chance of catching any drips at that point. So it may be hard to kind of see where you've been. But if you get down low, you can kind of see the reflection of the varnish. And that way you can tell where you've covered and where you haven't. The easiest way to get drips on the edge is if you're rubbing the brush and starting across this way. It's going to drain the brush, this varnish, right on the edge. So you want to wipe off the edge, and as opposed to onto the edge. And that'll eventually, that'll help to avoid drips. So I've got a little bit of a hair um, strand there. So I just take a little bit of this, I can kind of wipe it off like that. And even if it dries in there, with a little bit of light sanding in between coats, you can get those little um, strands to come off. Now the only risk that I have of painting in the bright sun like this is it may be too hot. And what happens is it just dries too quickly. So that's one reason to just kind of go you know, they always say it's better to have multiple thin coats than one heavy coat. And this is a good example of when to do that. Um, if you put too heavy of a coat on, it's going to dry too quickly in the sun. And you're going to, it won't, it won't sort of flatten out as much. It'll dry before it has a chance to do that. Now this uh, wood, like I've shown you, has already has um, some oil soaked into it. If you were doing it on bare wood, you'd want to thin the varnish and you want to read the can, they should describe to you how much to thin it. Typically you thin it by 25% with their suggested um, thinning agent. Now in a, in a pinch you can use regular paint thinner, um, but I like to go ahead and buy a can of um, whatever they recommend for their thinner. Um, may seem like a little bit extra work and you got to put in a, an additional jar um, for that, but um, it does make a difference. It helps it to soak into the bare wood better and the additional layers of varnish you put on top of that will adhere better. So 25% thinning on the first coat and then you're good to go 100% after that. And I'm just going to run this brush that's pretty dry at this point around the edge to pick up anything that might have dripped over. Do it with a dry brush so that it'll soak up the varnish instead of putting more varnish on. I don't know how those fish survive in that water. They must like it, but it looks pretty disgusting. And I should have also mentioned I'm mounting this up off the ground, so definitely if you're outside and where there's any dirt around, you want it up off the ground to keep any kind of um, dirt from blowing on your varnish. The varnish is super sticky, so it's going to pick up anything in the air. But raise it up off, partly to get underneath like this and to get better airflow. And it's just better height for you to actually apply it. If it's right down low, um, I find it's harder to get a good coating on. 
my passerelle wants to just get involved in the action here and knock something over. It's hinting. I might need to move this piece. So once you're at the painting, sort of painting or varnishing stage like this, it's quite enjoyable. I find it actually quite relaxing and um, pleasant to do. You've done the hard work already, and now it gets to be putting on the varnish and seeing, reaping the benefits of your work. And you can see this is not going to be perfect. There's a little bit of light area here, but uh, I think, it, again, it adds sort of to the feature of it. The non-piano look, non-Boston Symphony Orchestra violin case. Now, if this was anything I wanted to protect or be concerned about, I'd take some wax paper and put it underneath this, and that keeps the paint, whatever you're putting on, um, keeping it from sticking to what you have mounted on. So I haven't really talked about how many coats, but um, brace yourself. And you, when you varnish, you're going to want to have seven, eight, even more coats on. It may seem like crazy ridiculous, um, but from then on, then it's just maintenance coats. I usually do two coats in the spring and two coats in the fall. Um, so it may sound like a lot, but it's just what's necessary. Um, and also in terms of what varnish to use, so if you are varnishing something inside, inside of the boat, inside of a house that won't see sun, you can get um, a more simpler varnish that doesn't have UV protection. Um, this one does, classic high gloss varnish with UV protection. UV protection is really important. Your varnish will break down very quickly in the sun if it doesn't have it. And it breaks down in the sun period. So that's why you need the maintenance coats of two coats, maybe one if you really are careful with it, but um, two coats in the spring and two coats in the fall. Now I do two coats because um, oftentimes it's not as easy as this tabletop. You have to, you can remove the piece of teak and you have to mask it off on the boat. And so you put in all the masking tape down. To me, you might as well put an extra coat on at that point. You've done all the hard work. Um, as you can see, putting the varnish on itself is pretty straightforward. It actually moves pretty quickly. Um, varnish, I mean, sorry, prepping, sanding and all that, and especially masking off an area takes a lot of time. So um, I just usually take advantage of that extra time or effort you put in and put an extra coat on in the spring and, a, and then two coats in the fall and you're good to go. Now I know a lot of the teak oil enthusiasts might say, hey, that sounds like a lot of coats, um, but it's really not. It's, um, it's coating it every six months versus teak oil. You're, you might get away with a month depending on your use of the boat and the weather and all that, but it may be more like every two weeks you got to re-oil and, uh, you know, unless you have nothing else to do in life. That sounds like a lot of work to me. Again, a few little spots there, probably wine stains, and uh, they'll make us remember, remind us to drink more wine and enjoy it. You'll see I haven't really used much varnish. Um, like I said, it goes on pretty thin, and that's why you have to put so many coats on. So the varnish will last quite a while, unless on the first coat you're going to use more, even though you thin it. It's going to soak in a lot, and so you'll, you'll use quite a bit when you put that first coat on. I'm going to look down the edge, reflection, and see if I've got everything coated. And i got some drips here too, I'm going to wipe those out. There we go, all down there for the first coat. Prep and clean up are the most time consuming parts. So if I clean up and put a little wedge, a paper towel down in the groove there to get that varnish out of the groove. Otherwise it just sticks to the lid and it makes the lid harder to open and not as good of a seal. Okay, I want to get the brush put away in a Ziploc as quick as possible to keep it from drying. Now you can also squeeze as much varnish out of the brush as possible too. That can help keep it from drying up too much and getting hard. I'm just going to stick it in a Ziploc. Seal the air out there really well. A 
Okay, there you go, coat two done. Um, in my haste, I forgot about sanding between coats. You want to do that with like a 240 or 320 grit sandpaper, a light sand, and then clean off the sand residue. It helps to keep the coat smooth. Um, so, oh well, I'll just sand on the next, after this, this coat I just put on dries, and then each one after that. You, um, the last coat, you, it's best not to sand before that. Um, so, two coats on, it's looking great, but you gotta hold back in your temptations to just stop there because it looks so good. You gotta keep going. Seven to eight coats is ideal. Okay, you'll notice um, I'm just doing, using um, some 320 sandpaper. You could use 240 or something like that. I wouldn't go to 120. That might be a little bit too coarse, but a 240 to 320 or so is a good uh, between coat sanding uh, level. And you'll see when I, I'm just doing a light sand, you can already see there's little ridges and little bumps um, from the last coat. And that's all you're doing is smoothing that out a little bit. Um, don't go too aggressive, otherwise you'll go right through the, the coat. And I wouldn't use a um, power sander, I would just use a hand sander. You could also put this on a block if you wanted to. Try to go in the direction of the grain as much as you can. And again, it's just a light sand. You're just trying to pick up that surface um, roughness. Otherwise, you're going to continue to generate more bumps and it won't be quite as smooth. Now, if you wanted a little bit, a little bit of roughness, if it's like something you're going to be stepping on and you want some traction, then definitely leave it in here. In fact, I put um, sand grit in the varnish just to give us some grip on a floor, on a cockpit sole. But of course, on a table, it's nice to have it smooth. Okay, so that's the sanding. I'm going to come back with a light amount of paint thinner to clean up the residue. And you don't need a lot of paint thinner, just a very light amount on the rag. I'm going to wipe in one direction. There we go, we're all set there. And by the time I get back out here with the varnish and the paintbrush, that paint thinner will be pretty much evaporated. So for that last coat, I was um, using that chip brush I started with from yesterday. And it was giving me all sorts of problems. The little hairs were all flaking off. Um, you usually see that early on when you start using a chip brush, but after a while, the loose stuff goes away and you have the, a workable brush, but it kept flaking off. So I um, went down the street to a little marine store here, a tiny little marine store and got probably still a chip brush, but slightly better. Based on cost, it's probably still a chip brush. It was only a couple euros. I'm um, hoping this will work better. It's all I can find. I don't have time to go driving all around to find a better marine store, but this should work a little better. So the yeah, story there is that maybe all chip brushes aren't made alike, and sometimes you might have better luck with them, and, and um, they're really not meant for varnishing, but you know, you can give it a try. So this uh, brush worked a lot better than the chip brush. I didn't have to stop at all to pick up little brush hairs off of the varnish. So, um, you know, that goes to show you <laughs> a little bit more money for a better brush makes sense. I was able to find one down the street. Obviously, if you're home or at access to a, um, a good marine store or hardware store, definitely go and get the get a good brush. Um, and then you can always reuse it if you soak it in paint thinner and um, get all the old varnish out of there. Okay, that's it. Uh, seven coats on the tabletop, so it should be looking really good and last a long time. Uh, at least till next spring, I'll put a couple more coats on. My goal was to show you that varnishing is not really that hard. It does take time in the sense that you have to space out your coats and there's a lot of coats on, on bare teak. Um, but you get to the point now where it's just maintenance mode. It's just a couple coats in the spring, a couple coats in the fall. And so you'll find that, um, you know, you'll get in the habit and the groove of doing that and it'll be hopefully pretty straightforward. So getting to this point is a bit of work, um, but it's certainly a lot easier, as I mentioned earlier, than doing teak oil. 
um, and it also looks a whole lot better than just letting teak go um, go weathered. Although people do let their teak on on decks and all that weather, and I think that makes sense because um, it gives a little bit better traction than if you were to oil it or definitely varnish it. So um, you know, a couple of key takeaways here are to the preparation is key, like any kind of painting job. You want to clean the teak, um, use teak cleaner if necessary, but uh, you can sometimes just get away with some light sanding. Um, clean up after your sanding, clean up you know, with a tack cloth or with a paint thinner on the cloth over the wood and make sure your kind of work area is free of dust and, and all that too, because that'll get in the air or maybe it's already in the air and it'll come down and it'll stick to your first or second coats. So preparation is key. Um, as I showed you, you can get away with using a chip brush, although it'll help you, um, it'll maybe save you some time, maybe make it a little bit better um, if you use a nicer brush. And if you have the opportunity to get a really nice brush and to keep reusing that and clean it with paint thinner, um, all the better. First coat should be thinned. I recommend 25% or whatever the manufacturer says. That'll help you a lot with that first coat. And make sure you do plenty of coats. I did seven coats on this, which is really the minimum. I wanted to do eight, but I ran out of time. Um, so, you know, seven, eight, even more coats, um, it'll really help you in the long run. Um, and then you're really set. So, um, you know, just when you're wiping the, the varnish on, be careful of drips. Don't put on too much, but that's kind of a general rule of painting anyways. But varnish does have a little slipperiness to it, especially the Interlux schooner varnish that, that I use. And I like it because it has that good, um, good film quality where it lays out flat and doesn't show a lot of ridges. Sanding me between coats is important and cleaning up after the sand residue, except for the last coat, as you saw, I didn't sand before the last coat. I don't know really where that comes from. Uh, maybe there's a less chance of getting sand residue uh, on your last coat, I'm not quite sure why. Um, varnishing is kind of an art, and a lot of people have, have a lot of opinions about it. You kind of saw my sort of no frills, get it done, you know, enjoy how it looks, but don't make it a piano. So try to find that happy medium there where you're not so crazy and anal about the quality of it, but not sloppy about it, that it really kind of, you get air or water inside. It really doesn't look very good when it's done. So again, hope you enjoy the video. Look forward to your comments. And uh, let me know if you like these kinds of videos and I'll do more of them. Thank you for watching.